Hello and welcome to Earthquake Tip number three. My name is Dr. Shailesh Kumar Agarwal, Executive Director of BMTPC, and I'm going to present to you all about earthquakes, its concepts, terminologies, and how to construct buildings and structures to withstand earthquake forces through 32 earthquake tips, which are authored by Professor C. B. R. Murthy, mentored by Professor Sudhir Kumar Jain, and developed by IIT Kanpur in association with Building Materials and Technology Promotion Council, that is BMTPC. Through these tips, our aim is to spread light technical information in simple to understand language to our professionals who are in the field designing and constructing structures, especially architects and engineers. Before we start, let's make a pledge that any new structure we design or build must be earthquake resistant. This earthquake tip number three will explain you various terminologies most often associated with earthquakes. Let's look at this uh, figure. The point on the fault where slip start is called focus or hypocenter of the earthquake. Remember, in the earlier tip, I told you that earthquakes generate due to sudden slip at fault releasing large amount of elastic stain strain energy. The point where slip start is called focus. The point vertically above this focus or hypocenter on the earth is called epicenter. The, the depth of focus from epicenter is called focal depth. Normally when earthquake occurs, it is said that the earthquake occurred below the ground at certain depth. This depth is nothing but focal depth and it is, a, it is an important parameter for determining the damage potential of earthquake. Generally, shallow focus earthquakes having focal depth less than 70 kilometers have more damaging potential. The surface distance from the epicenter to the point of interest is called epicentral distance. A number of smaller sized earthquakes before and after a big earthquake normally occurs. Uh, the big earthquake is called main sh shock and the earthquake occurring before the big earthquake and after are called foreshocks and aftershocks respectively. Often we hear that earthquake comes, uh, uh, comes with, the, with certain magnitude in Richter scale and earthquake intensity. Let us discuss what is magnitude and intensity. Magnitude is a quantitative measure of the actual size of earthquake and this was invented by Professor Charles Richter and that is why magnitude scale is also known as Richter scale. Remember in the previous tip we discussed seismogram or axonogram which is nothing but the time history of your ground motion. The magnitude is obtained from seismogram and depends on the waveform amplitude and epicentral distance. This magnitude scale is also known as local magnitude scale and denoted by, you know, English alphabet capital F. There are other magnitude scales as well, such as body wave magnitude, surface wave magnitude, and, and wave energy magnitude. These magnitude scales have no upper or lower limit, means uh, the Richter magnitude can be as high as 10 or more than that and it can be as low as 0 or its value can even be negative. The magnitude scale is normally in logarithmic scale and therefore increase in magnitude by 1.0 implies 10 times higher waveform amplitude and about 31 times higher energy release. Let me explain it in this way. The energy release in a magnitude 7.7 uh, .7 earthquake is about 31 times that the energy release in magnitude uh, 6.7 earthquake and is about 1000 times, which is multiplication of 31 by another 31 that released in uh, magnitude 5.7 earthquake. So uh, a difference in magnitude by two will enhance the energy release by 1000 times. Fortunately, this huge amount of energy which is being released during earthquakes goes into heating and fracturing the rocks. Only a small fraction of this huge amount of energy goes into seismic waves 
which travel through ground and surface to large distances causing shaking and hence damage to structures. Now let's look at this table which shows you that depending upon magnitude, uh, the earthquakes are often classified into different uh, groups. Earthquakes having magnitude more than 8 are called great earthquakes. Earthquakes having magnitude 5 to 5.9 uh, are called moderate earthquakes. This table also gives you annual average number of earthquakes occurring across the earth. On an average, one great earthquake, that is the earthquake of magnitude more than 8 or higher, occurs each year. Now let's discuss intensity. Earthquake intensity is a qualitative measure of actual ground shaking at a specific location during an earthquake and is assigned as Roman capital numeral, that is 1, 2, 3, up to 12. There are several intensity scales namely, uh, named <coughs> after the scientists who invented it. The most commonly used uh, intensity scales are uh, modified mercury intensity, that is MMI, and Mediv Stoner Karlik, that is MSK scale. Both scales are quite similar and uh, the range varies from intensity 1 to intensity 12. Intensity 1 is least perceptive and intensity 12 is most severe. As you can see in this table, the intensity scales are based on three features of shaking, uh, namely perception by the people and animals, performance of buildings and changes in natural uh, surroundings. For example, uh, the case shown here is uh, of intensity 8. Uh, during intensity 8, there will be fright and panic uh, among human beings. Buildings will suffer damages depending upon their typologies and there will be changes in the ground in terms of small landslips and cracks in the ground. Now let's understand what is the difference between magnitude and intensity. As explained earlier, magnitude of an earthquake is a measure of its size in quantitative terms. For instance, one can measure the size of an earthquake by the amount of strain energy released at a fault structure. This means the magnitude of earthquake is a single value for a given earthquake. On the other hand, intensity is the indicator of the severity of ground motion generated at a given location. Clearly, the uh, severity of shaking is much higher near the epicenter than the farther away. As shown uh, in this figure, during the, uh, during the same earthquake of certain magnitude, different locations will uh, have different levels of intensity. Uh, let me elaborate further by this feed. Let, let me elaborate this again uh, by this figure. Consider the analogy of an electrical, electric bulb. The intensity of light that is illumination at the location uh, near 100 watt bulb is higher and will reduce as we move further away from the source that is that is the bulb. While the bulb releases 100 watts of energy, the intensity or uh, illumination at location depends upon the voltage and its distance from the bulb. Hence, the size of the bulb that is 100 watt is like a magnitude of the earthquake and illumination at different location uh, are like the intensity of shaking at certain location. We often encounter magnitude and intensity during earthquake and normally the question being asked, uh, can my building uh, withstand the earthquake of magnitude 7? To answer this question, it is important to note that M7 earthquake caused different shaking intensities at different locations and therefore the damage induced in the building at these locations will be different and therefore it is it is the particular level of intensity of shaking that buildings are designed to resist not so much of magnitude so 8 9 10 11 12 whatever is the intensity for that normally the building is uh, designed now for the designers another important parameter is peak ground acceleration or pga remember i told you in the earlier tip that pga is the maximum acceleration level experienced by the ground during shaking. 
this can be used for quantifying quantifying the severity of ground shaking as shown in this table there are empirical correlations available between intensity and uh, the pgas for example you can see here the mmi intensity of uh, 8 uh, the pga uh, experience will be around 0 0.25 to uh, 0.30 Therefore, the buildings, if designed for lethal force equivalent to 0.25 to 0.3 G, will not suffer any perceptible structural damage. Nowadays, with the advancement of technologies, strong ground motions uh, records are normally preferred, which are obtained from seismic instruments uh, to quantify destructive ground uh, shaking rather than PGA. Uh, thank you uh, for uh, this tip. You can download uh, the tip from www.bmtpc.org website. The next earthquake tip, which is uh, uh, tip number four, uh, will be on uh, where are the seismic zones uh, in India. Thank you very much.